can face tomorrow. Aren't you glad? If we did not have the hope of heaven and eternity with the Savior of the world, I would not even want to go on to live tomorrow, let alone in the future. But we hold this hope. It's more of a hope, isn't it, friends? It's an assurance that what he did at Calvary paved the way for us to have fellowship with the Father and to guarantee us eternal joy, happiness, no more sorrow, no more tears, eternal perfection with Jesus. Praise God. That's worth singing about every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Central Time. If we did nothing else but sing about that, it would be worth it. Praise God. Well, it's so good to have you joining us tonight here in uh, Mayberry Studios in Frisco, Texas, and broadcasting all over the world right now. And many of you tuning in from other nations, and we welcome you and thank you, and we appreciate your heart for worship. I know you're tuning in to get a touch of his presence as you worship him. That's what an hour with Jesus is all about. Praise God. Well, it's been a week since we started a deed a day. Let me see a raise of hands. How many have done something for somebody else every day in the last week? I'm putting mine up. I've done it. I'm even keeping a chart. Not for you. This is just for me and my walk with God. I want to trace what I'm doing and realize how much of my focus is on me versus the needs of others. And I think that's a good, good uh, reason that we're doing this 23 days of a, a good deed for somebody else every day. Um, I'm just, I'm going, I'm going through a day now going, what can I do? Who can I help? You know, <laughs> who can I bless? And it's just the way it is. Uh, but it's fun to actually get your mind off of yourself and think about others. So praise God. Things are uh, progressing right along. I can't believe it's already the 8th of November. Man, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting older. You think that's possible? Time is flying by. Thanksgiving will be, what, two weeks from tomorrow. Is that just incredible? Two weeks from tomorrow. Wow. Well, if you're joining us for the first time, and it seems like every week we have those who have not heard about this program before, we welcome you. Let me tell you, I have a book out, best book I've ever written. Well, it's the only book I've ever written. Let me quickly say the uh, introduction here, a couple of paragraphs, so that you know if you haven't gotten the book yet. I can't live without his presence. I'm not talking about listening to or singing songs that include lyrics about his presence. I'm not talking about an emotional frenzy that is the result of a beat-driven, full-of-the-flesh worship service. And we've all been in those. Well, maybe, maybe not all of you. I certainly have. I'm not talking about the latest supposed cutting-edge church experience where talented musicians get together on any given Tuesday night to write a new contemporary Christian hit for the following Sunday that somehow goes on to sweep the nation. I'm not even talking about the most beautiful of melodies and lyrics ever written, whatever you may deem that to be in your own musical taste and experience. I'm talking about his presence. The tangible, unmistakable, uncounterfeitable, healing, soul-changing, manifest presence of God. All of the above things mentioned may contain it, but are no guarantee of it in and of themselves. Think of it, the glory of heaven touching earth, the attendance of the creator of the universe. This is the essence of life to me, and I hope it is to you too, because I don't know anything in this life that is more precious than the presence of God. In my services, I pray for one thing. Lord, at some point tonight, or several points, but at some point, let everybody coming to this service 
experience the manifest presence of God because I know it changes you when you do that. It changes me when suddenly the Holy Spirit is in the room by his presence and you can feel him and you can just sense him working and changes take place in your heart. Uh, Everything looks different when you encounter the presence of God. So I hope that you have experienced that. If not, I've already prayed that you will experience that tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Did I forget anything else? Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. Seems like there was another announcement that I didn't write down. Well, shoot. I'll probably think of it later, and then I will call it to your attention. <laughs>
of God. keys to successful walk as a believer is a continual attitude of gratitude. You can't be a happy Christian without thanksgiving in your heart. This is the month of thanksgiving in America. It should be the theme of our lives every day, all my life. You've been faithful. All my life, you've been so, so good. With every breath that I'm able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I don't know what road you've traveled. I don't know how the tribulations have mounted up in your walk, in your life. I don't know what circumstances you've had to deal with from a, from a little child. Uh, Liz and I have talked about dysfunctional families. We've decided there shouldn't even be a word called dysfunctional families. We're all dysfunctional, for goodness sake. That's the norm. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know anyone who's from a totally functional family. There's just stuff that we've got to deal with because we live on a fallen planet where sin is all around us, and so it affects everybody. But thanks be to God that Jesus has overcome the world. In this world, you are guaranteed to have tribulations. I don't know why some crazomaniacs think that because Jesus is your Lord, you no longer have problems. I can't find it in the Word. You will have tribulations. The good thing is, he's overcome this world. Doesn't mean he's overcome your tribulations and you're not going to go through them. It means that there is a better day coming because of who won the final victory at the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. I want to sing a song for one of our partners tonight. Uh, her husband just went home to be with Jesus uh, a couple of days ago. And these are precious people that I've gotten to know only online through our partner Zoom calls that we have occasionally. And um, Warren and Margot, uh, faithful partners to New Glory International, just the sweetest, most dearest people. And we lost a good friend in Warren, but we can't feel totally lost because he won his race He's not in pain anymore. He is now dancing with the angels around the throne of God. And so this song, Margo, is for you tonight and for your family. And I pray that it blesses you. And anyone else who is dealing with loss and death at this time, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will minister to you. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas Unknown waves before you But at the 
end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your soul. But just think
her sister and her brother. My brother's up there waiting for us. <laughs> Very soon, friends. Can you see it? Can you sense it in the air? Can you hear him coming?
We bless you tonight, Lord Jesus. You are holy. Mm, and you are worthy of all of this praise. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. I hope you are having a good time with the Lord tonight. <clears throat> Praise God. Mm. Heaven's going to be something, isn't it? Heaven is going to be something.
the people worship him
There is none like him. Lord, there is none like you. We give you all of our love song tonight. <laughs> you alone are worthy. We love to sit at your feet. Look in your eyes Because your love is so deep More deep than we'll ever realize So we sit with you sweet peace tonight sweet sweet peace in the house if you've got your Bibles handy and want to follow along tonight from 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 for a few minutes I'm going to read from the New Living Translation tonight. Second Corinthians chapter 4, friends of God. Paul was writing this to this church of recent converts, some Jews, many Gentiles. And you know, new believers, they're into everything. They don't they can't they can't tune into their favorite Christian TV station and uh, get all the stuff to become disciples. So Paul had several, I think four different letters he wrote to them. At least four, um, scholars tell us. Therefore, Verse 1, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. We reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. See, they were still kind of dabbling in the old life and getting into stuff and it wasn't good. So Paul's going, look, this is what a believer does. <laughs> Not this. You have a new life now. Don't go back to the old life. What's he say in other parts of, of the New Testament? Don't return to a yoke of slavery. In other words, become who you are. You're not that. You're alive in Christ. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. We reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God and all who are honest know this. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. 
Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. And don't we see that right now? Oh my goodness, in the headlines every day. More hatred for anything that could represent God. You think they'll hate a people group? They don't. They hate the one who made them. That's all it is. It's rebellion to God. Satan is the author of that. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Verse 5. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. I wish some pastors would learn this. <laughs> oh, forgive me, Lord. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of of Jesus Christ. Verse 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. And we've got to keep that in mind. Anytime you think you've got some great gift for the world, understand where it really comes from. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Hear me, loved ones. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. I'll stop there in the interest of time. Listen, we are pressed from all sides, not crushed, struck down, not destroyed. Sometimes it's our own kind that really want to hurt uh, many of you know that in a difficult time of my life, I went through a divorce about 15 years ago. Don't talk about it much because it's over and it's under the blood of Jesus. But I had reached a point in my ministry where I was well known around the United States and even more so around the world. But when that identification was associated with me. Probably I was in, I don't know, maybe 200 to 300 churches in America over those years. And after that difficult season, I think I've counted five churches that I've been back to. The other ones just, they just won't go back. They won't there's not enough grace as we're taught to live by grace and live by faith. 
But the thing is, that's kind of struck down because I was struck down through much of my own doing, but not destroyed, all right? Because I'm sitting in front of you tonight worshiping the king with you. The enemy, the God of this world, wanted to destroy me once and for all. He hates the anointing on my life. He hates the gifts that God has put in your life. So if he can take something, whether it was your fault or somebody else's fault, and he can dismiss you from following your destiny and your calling, that's exactly what he wants to do. Don't give up. That's what Paul just said. We don't give up. Because we know the final score. We know who wins. And I'm thankful that other places of worship have opened their arms to me uh, in the last many years. Because God doesn't give up on us if we don't give up on ourselves. Keep on walking. (laughs) Praise God. You'll be struck down. You live in a world of tribulation. We said at the top of the program, he's overcome the world. So keep your eyes on him and he will do what you can't do. He will open doors that no man can close. Next year, I'll be in on, I think, three or four different continents singing and leading people to the throne of God by his grace, by his mercy. Listen, our time is up. I hope that's encouraging to you. Never, ever give up. God has something for you to do. Praise God. I hope you've enjoyed being with us for an hour with Jesus. Stop by the website, newglory.org, and you can find out about our ministry. We would love it if you would make a donation to our ministry, or better yet, become a glory partner and support us every month so that we can take his presence to the nations. We love you. We thank you for joining us tonight. Where my lovely wife, Liz, who's on the other side of the camera, is doing a, 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 I was going to say a a smart job, a a bang-up job, whatever. She does a great job for her and myself. Until next time, bye-bye for now.